Yes, um, my name is Eric Nati. Um, I work for International Water Management Institute. Uh, briefly, I'll introduce what we do, what I do, and what we do as UMI, and then also um, tell you uh, a bit about my uh, topic, which is a question. So I'm hoping that by the end of my presentation, we'll be able to answer the question ourselves, and then ask take away. Whatever it is, we'll, we'll find out at the end of the presentation. So as I said, my name is Eric Nate. I, I am a researcher. I, my, my, my background or my focus is in um, environment and agri-food. So I basically research into uh, fecal sludge management, circular economy, nature positive solutions, and the likes. So the concept of health uh, comes from circular economy, trying to recover useful resources from water, um, waste, um, and then trying to recover those things in a safe manner to ensure that the public health of people are protected. So my colleague is Javier. In fact, he's leading uh, one of the projects, uh, One Health Project, um, that is, is currently ongoing, and they are in charge of the water um, uh, component of that project. I am relatively new to One Health, but by virtue of my um, um, background, uh, I'm able to stand here today. So, IMI. So, IMI is uh, an international research for development uh, organization that stands at the forefront uh, of global agricultural research. Our mission is to be able to provide water solutions um, to sustainably manage um, water, land, resources for food security, livelihood, and then the environment. And we do this around um, key research for development portfolio. This, these things keep evolving with time, and now that we are having new initiatives uh, being developed, I'm sure some of this um, portfolio, um, and then their names will change. But for now, we have four research portfolios that we, we work in. So we have the Water for Food and Ecosystem, we have the Water, Climate Change, and Resilience, um, research portfolio, we have the water and digital innovation portfolio, and then we have the water growth and inclusion uh, portfolio, which I and my colleague fall in uh, with what we do. So with regards to water solutions, because I mentioned that we, we, mesh, we, we provide water solutions, with regards to water solutions, particularly for health and nutrition, uh, we focus on um, so many aspects. So we focus on water pollution control, we focus on wastewater and food safety, we focus on water-related vector-borne diseases, we focus on health impacts from floods um, and drought, um, water for nu nutrition, security, etc. So what we do, IMI, IMI works to, to enhance human health and nutrition, concentrating on all the challenges for which water is a key a part of the solution. Now, to, to One Health, um, we talked about uh, the three main pillars, right? Humans, animals, and then the environment. What, what my, my job here is to bring to your attention that water is key in the One Health conversation. Why? Because water, not just water and its quantity, but also the quality are central to the One Health connectivity, as you can see, because water plays a critical role in the transmission of pollutants. Now, these pollutants in question, or the critical pollutants, uh, in, in include fecal pathogens, antibiotics, antimicrobial resistant bacteria, and resistant genes. Uh, we also have heavy metals and then other toxic substances. And all these uh, pollutants usually have uh, I mean, basis, or they, they, are, they are carried mostly by water. Now, when you look at the water food system, um, you can see in the first graphic uh, how uh, the environment interacts with water. So globally, the, the, the health of water um, it's, affi uh, it's affected by various sectors. So you can see like the livestock sector, you can see manufacturing, you can see cities, uh, you can think about production, processing, preparation. I can give you an example. Even in Ghana, 
um, the mining sector. A couple of years ago, we were faced with illegal mining, and this had led to pollution of many water resources, such that even if you open your tap, the kind of water you see um, is, 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 is brown, and it contains a lot of turbidity, it contains a lot of um, heavy metals, which directly affects human health, it affects production, and, and all. So this is a typical, uh, this a, a typical presentation of how the water health is, is, is affected uh, by those who use the water and then also the pollution sources um, to, to the water. So what we do in IMI is that we take systems approach uh, to be able to um, analyze the water food system to, to quantify the, um, the, the pollution loads and then also to be able to monitor um, these pollution loads, especially with regards to um, livestock. And I, I want to talk about livestock because it's one of the, the projects that my colleague Javier is, is, is working on. So I'll quickly jump into um, that uh, project. So th this, this project um, is, is a collaborative project between these um, institutions. I believe some of them are here and uh, may know about it. So it has five work packages, uh, as you can see. And IMI is, is directly uh, responsible uh, or working in the, in the water uh, package uh, but bit of the, of, the, of the project. And, and the issues that we are tackling with, with water are microbial contamination, um, livestock waste management, and then also improper waste use. So this, the output from this project ideally is, 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 is to have watershed quality monitoring and modeling uh, to be able to reuse livestock waste as it directly affects um, um, water health and then also um, address food and water safety. So I'll talk about all these outputs in a bit. So the outcomes, I mean, before I talk about the output, the outcomes of, of, of this uh, project um, is, is at two levels. So at the state or local level, uh, want to be able to um, empower watershed planners and pollution control authorities to use the monitoring and modeling to inform decisions and investments for pollution control and then the health and environmental risk mitigation. And also food safety authorities promote safe water interventions to improve food safety in the critical points along the livestock value chain. And then livestock farms and waste managers adopt business models for RR from animal waste. Like um, the, 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 the presenter was talking about the use of animal waste, which uh, brings uh, pathogens, and then also some toxic substances into the soil. So we are look, trying to look at how some of this waste management uh, uh, can be adopted in a safe way and then ad adopt a business model surrounding the use of um, animal waste. At the national level, um, the planning processes and then committees are informed by the evidence generated and collected by the project, including the role of water in the transmission of pathogens. So. This project is currently being carried out in uh, watersheds, two watersheds in Ethiopia, I, one in Ethiopia and one in India. I think the watershed in Ethiopia is, is, is a khaki watershed, and then the watershed in India is called Song. So these are the implementing partners and then the uptake partners. Now I want to talk about the, the output. So the, the monitoring and then the modeling. So the monitoring, monitoring is is to help understand the spatial and temporal distribution of selected pathogens and antibi antibiotic resistance strains in, in the steady watersheds, and then also conduct risk or exposure assessment through different pathways, um, that is to drinking, to bathing, to irrigation water, et cetera. And then also to be able to generate data for calibration and validation of the fit and transport models at watershed scale for selected pathogens. And then the modeling is to predict how these concentrations will change under different waste management and climate scenarios. And then text anti the effectiveness of solutions supporting uh, planning. So this is um, a graphic of, of the sources and generally the pathways and exposure uh, of antibiotics anti, uh, and then the resistant bacteria and then the genes 
in the aquatic environment. Um, then when it comes to the second um, output, which is water and food safety, uh, there's a gap which uh, has been uh, identified, which has to do with the contribution of water to the many foodborne borne illnesses that we, we talk about. And generally, we talk about poor water quality used in food production and post harvest processing. But then the relative contribution of water is, 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 is rarely quantified or identified. So this uh, gap is, is, is being addressed by collecting evidence through literature review, proposing methods to implicate water, and then generating evidence through the ILRI service. Thank you. So um, I get my takeaway, even before I take my seat, is, uh, is two things. So I want to ask, um, should water health be part of one health? Um, you can answer for yourself, but then what I want to emphasize is that water health is critical to all sectors, and it, it therefore must be considered in conversations that has to do with one health. Thank you very much.